St. Lucia's Prime Minister visits exciting new projects in the South. The morning heats up with Franny and Scotty. Bidding farewell to a friend from Taiwan. And St. Lucia leading the way in the great reset of developmental finance. All this and more as we take a look at the week that was in the Prime Minister's weekly diary. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney started the week on Sunday, July 5th by visiting several sites in the South, including the COVID-19 pre-screening tent at the Hiranora International Airport. The site forms part of preparations to reopen travel into St. Lucia and improve the management and enforcement of the new protocols for visitor arrivals coming into the country. As Prime Minister Chastney made an impromptu stop by the new ITEL BPO call center, he couldn't hold back his excitement to meet with some of the staff. The newest state-of-the-art call center is located in the Hiranora Free Zone and is a partnership between Jamaica-based ITEL BPO and Invest St. Lucia, which will house hundreds of employees. The Prime Minister's Sunday ended in Deriso as he stopped by the new football field. The upgrading of the field is part of government's ongoing plans to support local sports and upgrade facilities across the island. MCPM on DJPM. MCP. Bright and early Monday morning, the heat was on as the Prime Minister sat down with Blazing FM Scaddy and Franny for a no holds barred discussion on issues of the day. What we're attempting to do here is to try to see if we can recover the revenue faster. But at the same time, we must recognize that there, if we go too fast, we actually could probably hurt ourselves even more. All right. Well, Mr. PM, I want to say thank you so much for stopping by this morning. Yes, I have 200 more questions in. to ask you. Boy. As if you know, I would like to know if Carnival Monday is a holiday. You know, I just ask you. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's still a holiday. You know, Carnival, Carnival Monday is still a holiday. Make us happy. Well, I'm going to say to you that we are in discussions with the creative industry guys um, about something that we could potentially do um, later this summer and also something that we can do at the, at the end of the year. Um, but I just wanted to say to all those in the creative industry. I, I know the pain everybody's going through. Thank you, sir. You mm -hmm. know why? Because this, <laughs> this was going to be, this was going to be the best carnival oh, yeah. we've ever had. Yep. We all know that. Absolutely. Yep. Okay? So there's nothing worse than having a taste in your mouth. Yeah. Right? And then, Seeing it. And everything was sold out. Everything was everything, ready to go. Yeah. And so understand that the emotion that some people have thrown at me, I get it. I understand. I'm not upset. Okay, in any way, I get it. But at the same time, I want them to be appreciation. I can't invent carnival. I can't turn the clock back. I can't make that happen to find something that's going to substitute that in other ways. The government is stretched. We are stretched. We're stretched in healthcare. We're stretched in security. We're stretched in education. Everywhere we're turning around, we're stretched in social stabilization programs, right? We are doing everything we possibly can do. The creative industries are important. It will come back. The level of support I gave it pre-COVID showed us that we were in the right direction, okay? And we will continue going. I'm looking All forward right. to seeing okay. that. Hopefully you, we sir. will... Uh, but I miss it as much as everybody else does. Thank I you. assure you that. Um, hopefully we'll have you back here again. Yes, we'll check your okay. schedule, you know, um, to see when he can come back. We saw your millions of questions. You yes. do have lots of supporters as you do, um, know. you know, those, the critics. Um, but they are showing you lots of love. On Tuesday, it was on to Government House for a ceremony to say thank you and farewell to Taiwan Ambassador to St. Lucia, His Excellency Douglas Shen. Under Ambassador Shen's tenure in St. Lucia, the relationship between Taiwan and St. Lucia has deepened significantly. Hence, Governor General, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, presented Ambassador Shen with the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, which is an award presented to a person who has rendered eminent service of national importance to St. Lucia. When I look back at what he and we have been able to achieve for our respective countries since then, one would believe that his posting here has been in fact for much, much longer. Good morning. And I, I also say, Sakafat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
oh, I'm so touched. <laughs> you know, today, when uh, Royal St. Lucia Band played one of my favorite songs, My Way, you know, tears just in my eyes. And I just want to say, like the lyric of the last part of, the, of, the, of this song, and more, much more than this, how I do it my way with St. Lucia. <laughs> this morning, my wife Ling and I, together with the embassy staff, would like to thank the people and the government of St. Lucia for bestowing me on this outstanding honor. I received the Medal of Honor with appreciation and the humility, for it is not only a recognition of my service here, but also a symbol of the everlasting and the ever stronger bond between Taiwan and St. Lucia. With our season of festivals a little different this year, St. Lucia is looking at ways to celebrate and mark different occasions such as Carnival and Creole Heritage Month. The Prime Minister met with Culture Minister Honorable Fortuna Belrose and the Events Company to look at proposals and discuss some of the exciting initiatives on the horizon. In the current COVID-19 environment, the Prime Minister's Week has been filled with Zoom calls and online regional and international conferences. Among those was the World Economic Forum session on shaping the Great Reset of Development Finance with the aim of connecting local action to the global architecture to reset finance for development. St. Lucia has been working very closely with the World Economic Forum since our island was chosen last year to pilot the country financing roadmap. Prime Minister Shastny led the discussion which focused on the government strategy for addressing the economic crisis brought on by COVID-19 and how this will further affect the progress that the island has made towards the sustainable development goals. The country financing roadmap will provide a much needed platform for collaboration to prepare St. Lucia for the Great Reset. Integrating all domestic, international, private and public stakeholders across the investment value chain. This week, Prime Minister Shastney also took time out to prepare for the announcing of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan. The plan was prepared by the Ministry of Finance with recommendations from the Economic Recovery Multi-Sectoral Committee, comprising representatives from the private sector, trade unions and employers. There's something there for everyone. All citizens are invited to tune into the special broadcast on Sunday, July 12, 2020 at 8 p.m. on the National Television Network and local partner stations. That's a wrap on This Week with Prime Minister Shastney. Join us next week as we continue to review the Prime Minister's Weekly Diary. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Nicole MacDonald.